to all kind of doctors, New York, Philadelphia, nothing helped him. If we'd known Dr. Goss probably back then, maybe there would have been some help. So you don't have to um, always look at medical, um, the medical field to help you. Sometimes there's alternate ways, and this is what we're doing here. We're giving people the option. When the medical field says, oh, we can't help you anymore, then it's, it's up to us to go out and seek other ways to find to help ourselves. So I'd like to bring Dr. Goss up to talk to you about um, iridology and about um, the different herbs that can help you. Please give him a warm round. I'm going to probably be as brief as I can so that uh, if there's any questions or anything that anybody has to ask, that you have plenty of time to ask, answer, answer your questions because I can sit here and talk about the things that I want to talk about and may miss almost everything that you, you might need to address or talk about. Um, I, I put some drawings up here on the board because sometimes, you know, we happen to be... Uh, people that understand art more than we understand, you know, just the verbal situation. Because most of the time when we have a gathering and you look around the room, you know, you don't see too many people, you know, with pencils and paper. And the sometimes that is good. And it depends on, you know, the kind of education that, you know, you may have been miseducated about and because if you can listen to any lecture you can always take in that that it's going to have something to do with your being and discard everything else that is being said that way you only remember that that you need to remember you know when you depart and that way you sleep good at night and don't have to worry about uh one and you know what did they say uh, you know, is that true? Uh, all that, you know, you don't even forget it. But if you write it down on paper sometime, you may look around, you know, you may miswrite it. And say, did he say this? You know, yeah, he did, you know, and by the time you get to pass it around, you got a big problem, you know, also there. Uh, the last night I stated that when you were born, you knew everything it was to know about anything that it is to know. All we have to do is just grow into that. But it is from birth that we actually have been tampered with. The moment that you are born, in most cases, they will separate the mother and the child. That's something that should never be done. The mother and the child should never be separated. They'll also take the first milk from the mother's breast. This is especially of people of color. Take the first milk from the mother's breast. And that is a milk that is actually, in case some of you might know, some of you may not know. But that milk becomes very, very expensive. And it can easily be sold on the open market you know, for some $25,000 just for that first milk that comes out of the breast. Because that's the milk that actually binds the mother, the child, and also to the environments and the elements that the child has to deal with throughout <coughs> life. It also protects the child from most of the diseases and ailments that the child would ev ever come up with of all these things that they give you shots to supposed to you know, eradicate or keep you from getting certain diseases that uh, were basically that are man-made. So it is in definitely important to have that particular bond. I always say that it's best that a midwife is always in the picture of any birth of people of color because of the totally separate, different program. And there is a reason for that particular program. Now, we all know that the sum total of all knowledge is 33 and a third degrees. If you don't believe it, ask the Masons, Eastern Stars, 
Phi Beta Kappas and all the rest of the people, and they will actually tell you that if you can have 33 and a third degrees, then you are a grand master of whatever it is that you're doing. And at the same time, you have that authority to give out that knowledge that is complete. But if you took a circle, and somebody just gave you the circle and said, OK, where does it begin, and where does it end? Nobody can tell you where a circle begins and it ends. Now, if you choose, you know, to, to make a starting point and then come back to that point, then it's still not a situation of a beginning and an end. But if you took 33 and the third degrees of that particular circle, then you got a beginning and you got an end. And you got a whole lot of things, you know, that actually has been left out. Now, the one thing, you know, that is actually needs to be killed and needs to be destroyed is the body itself. Now, if you notice from the beginning of time or from the beginning of certain times, the body has been on, under attack and any means necessary to get rid of it is actually what is taking place at this time. Because there is something, you know, that if you knew, you, there would be nothing on this planet that could bother you in any kind of way at all. But you need to know you. The words that we use, you know, when we start talking about, uh, I start to say self-esteem, is that it? Low self-esteem. Maybe that's it, anyhow. Self-esteem, low self-esteem, or whatever. It's just that if you have any kind of doubts at all about yourself, there is a program that was put in place when you were born to cause this to come about. You have been in a position to be annihilated from this earth, and almost every means necessary has been used. And yet, at the same time, the population continues to grow. It has to be something, you know, about the body itself that is actually telling you that you have more power in living than you do in dying. The AIDS, so-called AIDS, uh, I'm going to call it epidemic, and I want you to notice that I said so-called AIDS epidemic, uh, which needs to be treated as something, you know, that is real. In the year 1995, there was not supposed to be one black person left alive on the planet Earth because the AIDS virus was supposed to have consumed every black person at that particular time. In 1985, the, it had been stated that uh, one out of every five people living in America of color had the AIDS vaccine, uh, the AIDS, vi AIDS virus in their system. Now, that was way back then. So, I'd just like to do this just to make sure you know, this is a 1985 census that they took, which they say that the, at this particular time, the AIDS thing is, has exploded, and it is more now than it was at that particular time. But if I just happen to say the, the ones that's right here on the front row, uh, would either one of you, you know, be, uh, well, if they, either one of you have AIDS, I just put that. I see, if neither one of them has AIDS, if those statistics is right, that means everybody else in the room got to have AIDS. You know, so since they were sitting on the front row and they don't have AIDS, y'all in trouble. Yeah. The, see, it's just that anything that is actually put out there, you know, that you can actually believe is, is really going to be the thing that's going to cause you, you know, to die. And you may even die, you know, of stress, you know, based on the statistics that is out there. It will also make you go and roll up your sleeve and get an AIDS test 
and being be inoculated with the AIDS virus on the spot at that particular time. As long as you have melanin, pigment, you don't have to worry about any shot that the market has to offer. Nothing at all. If at any time that something happens and you need to get uh, any of those type of diseases that they're talking about out of the body, it only takes about 10 minutes a day of standing in the sunlight and it can be eradicated. You got the melanin, you have the pigment, let it work for you. It's just that simple. You know, the body is not nothing that's complicated, but it is complicated just because uh, we go and get educated that it is complicated. And any time that somebody tells us something is complicated, if we believe it, then it becomes complicated. The, uh, the, this is a mathematical uh, situation up here, 33 and a third degrees plus a question mark. And only you can answer that question mark. You know, nobody else can do that. Equals 360 degrees. Once you've gotten that, then you actually at that point you're complete and you don't really need to go any further than that. Now, one of the things that I do, you know, is, is called iridology. For those that are not familiar with it, it is a way of looking into the iris of the eye to find out what ailments or diseases or anything, you know, that's going on or, or breaking down in the body. And from that, you know, I'm able to tell you uh, what to do to correct that problem and what to get rid of to make sure that these problems, you know, don't exist. Now, there's many ways of doing it. You know, the eyes, the hands, the feet, you know, and the body, the body language, you know, even the, the way you walk, the way you talk, whatever it is, you know, there's a number of ways, you know, of actually dealing with the body to correct, you know, those problems. And any of these methods can be used successfully. You know, I, I, uh, I use all of them. And sometimes I use the camera just because it makes the other person feel better. But I normally I can just look at you for about 30 seconds and I can tell you all about you. Uh, and sometimes even psychologically. But uh, I want to explain to you a little bit about the iridology from a different standpoint of basically what I'm looking for other than just basically looking into the eyes. Now I have a picture of the colon on the board and uh, I use it called the colon, the heart of the body. You know this thing here is a pump that happens to pump blood through the body to keep the body you know and whatever's going on. Something you know that is actually dictated to by the colon and the applications and everything takes place in the brain. Now, the, one of the things that happens with the colon, and, and I'm gonna focus it basically more or less on the 360 degrees, because we're also dealing with the 360 lobes that is in the colon itself. And each one of the lobes in the colon points to some part, major part of the body, and that part of the body has to be fed. The part of the body that has to be fed is going to come through that lobe that is in the colon. So the, the mark that I put on the board to show, you know, like the darkness that is there, that dark mark is the clogging up of the colon by putting in things into the body that somebody named and said it was food. And you can pick anything, you know, you want to, you know, I mean, it could even be <coughs> one of them things that, you know, that if it don't get all over the place, it don't belong in your face. Uh, calls you. Hmm? They don't have the commercial out here, huh? 
Do you do, uh, do they have any Dennis Rodman's commercials out here? No. no? no. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, y'all ain't here to the good food. You got McDonald's here? Yes. Okay, you ever pack up the car and go to Jack in the Box? Okay. They don't have Jack in the Box here either. <laughs> Uh, they have fast food, food restaurants here? Oh, yeah. oh gee. <laughs> <laughs> the, we are in a different world. But it's just those things. You know what barbecue ribs are, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. We, we're going we're gonna to get together in a minute. The, and cheese? Yeah. Okay. At least they got something that's spread across. When you eat these particular things and it's no good for the system, the body does not know what to do with it. It can't digest it or tell the body how to digest it. And it has no use in the body at all. So it's wandering around in the body trying to find some place, you know, to deposit the nutrients that is there, which has no nutrients. So it ends up clogging up the body in some way or another. So that's what this would be here, is that it's clogged up. Now, if that load just happens to be, say, for your kidneys, and the kidneys have to be fed like every other part of the body, once it gets to that particular point, if it can't get the food value, can't get out at that point, then it passes up and it can't go out any other place because that's the only load that is designed for the kidneys. So even if you're eating good food, and food that is to feed the kidneys, it can't feed the kidneys because the lobe is closed. So it's gonna pass by. Now, once you clean that lobe out, now it can actually feed the kidneys. So you need to actually know what you're eating and know what particular foods you're eating that is caught the particular lobes in the body that causes you to have the deficiencies that you might have. And and then all, all those problems can be solved just simply by cleaning the body out from that. Looking into the iris of the eye, you actually see the lobes and stuff that is actually closed up. Because uh, the people that I've taught, you know, to do the iridology, I teach them, you know, with using the colon. So I take the colon and I put it right in the middle of the eye. And then it points to each part of the body. And then all these things in, in way of design shows what is happening to the body at the time that it is happening. Now let's say if the lobe is open, then the food value goes to a particular lobe and it ends up into the um, liver to be dispersed whenever the body happens to need any nutrients that is there. It goes into the, to the liver and we use a modern day term that they use, you know, as simple sugars. This is different than sugar but whatever you eat is supposed to be turned into simple sugars. The body itself actually can produce from the liver that has been processed through the colon. You know, that so far, if you know, if you go along with me, you know, it'll be like that. No? Okay. I'll back up, you know, if I have to. The this part of the body right here, you know, anybody know what this is? Anyhow, yeah, that's the, for those of you who don't know, that is the appendix. Now, it is stated, you know, this is in all medical science, all medical everything, is that we don't need the appendix anymore. So they just, in the body, it's a waste product in the body. You really don't need it, so the best thing to do is take it out. And a lot of people will go and get their appendix taken out, you know, based on the fact that somebody said they didn't need it. You know, so if you happen to be somebody in here, you know, that happened to have your appendix taken out at any particular time, then uh, in most cases, you know, you can usually tell. Let's see, is, any, is anybody in here had their appendix taken out? Don't raise your hand, you know, if you've had your appendix taken out. Uh, because there's a certain thing, you know, about a, a fear situation that can come up over the body 
just because the appendix has been taken out. Now see, if you take a look, you know, and you see that what I'm doing here, and I, I said I was going to do a demonstration and showing you, you know, you were actually sitting there looking. Then all of a sudden, you would wonder, you know, well, what is the demonstration all about? Okay, now in most cases, what would happen is, is that if you did this, you might not have no appendix. They may have taken your appendix out. Now I ask the question, anybody here had the appendix taken out? Did you flinch? You didn't flinch. Oh. <laughs> everybody else flinched in Okay. But that's one of the normal things that happen. And this can follow you through life based on whenever anything comes up and you think that something is wrong with you, you'll go to the doctor in a minute to get checked out to find out what in the world is going on in the body. All because the nutrients that is actually going into the system that may be of a poison nature is now uh, dispersing itself, you know, through the body because the appendix is not there, you know, to protect it. Now the appendix, so, so if you've had your appendix taken out, you want to make sure that you become a vegetarian. That's like a must because you don't need to, you don't have that protection, so you have to now use the protection from up here. And you do that, you'll never have any kind. At the same time, everybody really, you know, should be the vegetarian. The statement on the appendix, the reason that you don't need it is because we are no longer vegetarians. We are now meat eaters. So we don't need to process the food that vegetables produce. You can now get it, you know, it's, it's already processed through the meat. Now, we all know that everybody's not meat eaters. We know that. You know, it might be a very high percentage, but at the same time, uh, when they, the appendix was supposed to be for vegetarians. So, usually people of color, their natural habitat is vegetation. And that's what it is. You don't have the digestive enzymes in your system to digest meat. Now, if you were a European descent, you would have those digestive enzymes there to digest meat. And that's totally two different situations, you know, and, and the body itself responds to that based on the fact, you know, that there's at least a thousand different things that is different from people of color and those people, you know, that are not. And you can do some of the examinations, you know, on yourself, you know, as far as, you know, the sunlight and an intense heat. Uh, if you ever worked into an office building and you was the only person there of color, you would find that in the summertime, you'd have to wear a coat the air. because everybody's going to have their air conditioning on and they're going to freeze you to death. And they will still be trying to get rid of the heat that is there. The heat situation, you know, when we're talking about, well, even in the ozone layer and being depleted and destroying it, you know, being destroyed. That layer was actually put there, you know, some number of years back. And it was for the protection of those people that didn't have the melanin and pigment. So now that layer is being broken down. And at 60 degrees, with that leather being broken down indoors, you could have heat strokes, you know, if you were not people of color. And this is the kind of thing that is actually happening, and it's just that we can't get enough cold weather. Now, if you think, you know, that there's not a difference, then the Polar Bear Club on January the 1st is gonna jump in the water and go swimming. And they've been trying to get people of color to join them for years. So there's an invitation that's been out there for a long time and nobody's accepting it. It's probably one of the only organizations that's out there, you know, that people of color don't say we can't get into. You know, it's almost like saying, you know, 
I want to belong to the Ku Klux Klan. They won't let me in. Um, nobody's going to follow you out into the desert either. There's certain things you know about the body that because of the loaves and the cola, that it's going to sustain your life. Now, the, um, these are some of the things that can actually break the body down that we actually deal with a lot. Now, this, that is, if there's anybody in here that smokes, take a look at the, your cigarettes. Look at the pack. Read what is on the back of it and believe it. It says it'll take you out of here. It'll kill you. Anybody that is using tampons, read what it says on the back. It says it will take you out of here. It'll kill you. You know, we buy it, but we don't read it. I don't buy it. Oh, you don't? Okay. <laughs> it's good. And all you, all you have to do is just look at the back. And it'll tell you, you know, toxic shock syndrome and all this, you know, and that you can die, you know, from that. Anybody that is using toothpaste, I would suggest, you know, you do go to the health food store and buy your toothpaste. Mm -hmm. Because all you need to do is just pick up the toothpaste package in the store, read the back of it, and it tells you if you swallow by accident one drop, immediately get to a, a poison control center to have your stomach pumped. Mm -hmm. It says this on the box you know, the toothpaste that you actually use to brush your teeth. Then we ask, you know, the person, you know, what is wrong with these children? I mean, you know, you're giving it to them, you're killing them. You give them the toothpaste that says it's going to kill them. They brush their teeth, they swallow a lot of it. Now they got a problem. Then you wonder, what is the problem? This can go on and on. I mean, I can name a whole lot of different things, you know, but whenever you go into the store, pick up the package or whatever it is that you're going to get and turn to the back of it and read it. You know, you can get a um, cereal and the cereal in there has the hardest drug or the worst drug that this country has ever known. And it's usually the first or second degree uh, ingredient in the entire container. And it's supposed to be good for you. <clears throat> so when you start talking about cocaine, crack, heroin, all that, these are drugs, you know, that is actually on the scale would be rate 9, 10, 11, something like that. So there's a lot of other drugs before that that needs to be addressed. The worst one is going to be sugar. And most of us, you know, are going to have that sugar addiction. And if you happen to be one that eats sugar and you decide you know you want to get off of it just for a test to see if it has any effect on the body at all, you know, give yourself one week and make sure you got some long fingernails because you will be climbing the wall because of that sugar. And then sometimes, you know, for those of us that, you know, that may say that we don't eat sugar, haven't had sugar in a while, you know, if you pick up something by accident and you happen to taste it, and you taste a little sugar in it, you might feel a little guilty, look over your shoulder, make sure nobody's looking, and then you go ahead and finish the sugar. You know, you're not, you can't hide behind people not looking. You have to actually, you know, take charge of your body and do that that is needed to be done to your body, for your body. Um, you may be, the, you know, bothered with uh, fibroid tumors, prostate cancer, ovarian cysts, or these particular things. And if you are, then you need to know where these things is coming from. Now, when it comes to sugar, dairy products, and meat, most of our problems is going to be surrounded around those because this is the education that we get when we go to, to school. Dairy products has a chemical in it or a hormone in it, which is called diethylstabesterol, which is the same thing that is used in birth control pills. As a matter of fact, it is the birth control pill. And what happens is, is that when this DES gets into your system, 
it doesn't have any place to go and it attacks the genitals. This is when everything goes wrong. And if it's anybody in here, you know that if you eat cheese now, you know you're totally addicted to it. If you used to eat cheese a long time ago, you still have those flashbacks to the point, you know, where sometimes you may want some cheese. And sometimes it's been, uh, uh, you have to convince yourself that I'm going to have to do without and, you know, and not do it. But in most cases, what will happen is, is that you'll eat a, a little bit of it just for that satisfaction, you know, to the body. Now, most of the time, we have to get sick before we realize that we shouldn't have done it. That's where the melanin, that's where the pigment, that's where your, all the other things of the chakras and all this stuff should come in at. Because you gotta realize, you know, that when you're eating or consuming anything into your body, you gotta deal with the entire body, the whole body at the same time. And every part of the body is gonna play another, play a part on the other parts of the body and it is actually looking for it. So if you put it into your mouth, that may be one way that you were, eat, you were eating it. But at the same time, when you were smelling it, that also was another way you were eating. When you touched it, that's another way. So it just keeps going from one way to the other way to make sure you know that the body is in harmony and that each part of the body is playing a part in all the things that you consume, no matter how you consume them, through what you see, what you feel, and, and consume. This also has an effect on uh, the lobes in the colon, or whether these lobes are going to be open up to let that particular part of the food out into the body, you know, for the life that we cherish so much. Now, this is when it gets to the point, you know, where it's either one or the other and that is either extremely complicated or extremely easy. Now there's a, if, if I said to you, it is hard to eat right based on what we have out in the elements. And then I said, it is easy to eat right based on what we know. Now did it take any more energy to say one of those than it did the other? So if it doesn't take any more energy to say one than it does the other, you know, get yourself in the habit of doing those things that's going to be good for you. So when you say, you know, I can't do that, and shaking your head that way, you know, just say, I can do it. Shake your head that way. It's just as easy to make a mistake as it is to do it right, or vice versa. The, um, I'm going to do this, you know, because I think that, uh, you may have some questions, and we need to probably deal with those particular questions, you know, that you have. That's, that's enough. Okay. Edith, um, again, like last night, you mentioned about your um, product line and your uh, endeavors. Okay. So I guess you more questions. Oh, okay. All right. The, uh, let's, let's see that. You know, the, uh, one of the things, you know, before you get to your questions is that in, in Arizona, we have a resort, um, and the, the resort is actually there for people of color. Arizona, like some of the other states, have certain laws that is on the book that does not protect people of color, and this is one of the reasons that we have the Sim the uh, resort there for people of color. Whenever the time comes, you know, and we don't know when that'll be, and that'll be when the laws change, then it can be for everybody. But right now, you know, it's for people of color because based on the laws of this country. Um, so we, we do have, I have a flyer here, you know, that hopefully we can get enough of them, you know, out and it has the events of what is going on, you know, in Arizona. And uh, the, uh, I 
I get the feedback. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay. I thought it was, it was, you know, kind of talking to this. Okay. Uh, and the, we do have about eight seminars a year. The next one coming up is the harvest. This is where we actually harvest some of our products. You know, this is the products that you actually see. You know, here in some of these containers, we have over 90 different products that we use. Uh, fortunately, when they decided, you know, that they were going to take all the uh, products off of the market and put them into the pharmaceutical situation, which right now, Rexall Drug is the largest herbal company in the world, and yet they don't sell any herbs. So you can see why they're the largest. It's that the government gave them the money, and they bought up all the herbs. Mm. So the best way to do it, you know, was go and make your own. So we, we, we do harvest, you know, during this next particular seminar coming up. Uh, we do harvest all year, but uh, the, we do our own manufacturing. You know, we be right now the only herbal, the only black herbal manufacturing company in the world. And been that way for the last, you know, 23 years. Arizona has uh, 800 acres of land, and I don't know whether or not you know how much 800 acres of land would be, but uh, don't try to walk across it in a day. You know, that's, you know, if you do, walk fast, because you might not make it back before dark. Uh, There is another one in, in uh, North Carolina, you know, it's not finished yet, but it's very close. I mean, we do come, accommodate people there at this particular time, but uh, it's not finished. But we had to have one on the East Coast and one on the West Coast. Uh, one's more of a desert type in the mountain, and the other one's more of a rainforest. Um, and there are other places of resorts uh, of people of color across the country, but they are never advertised. That's also another another one of the rules and regulations, you know, is that you don't advertise it. In other words, so you don't see them in magazines and, and that type of thing. I think the only one that you might see that might be advertised in anything is Cottonwood, Alabama. That's probably the only one that's out there, but yet there's you know, a number of them throughout the United States. Hmm. One of the rules. Well, see, here's what the rule. This is this is. Let me let me explain the rule to you in uh, another way. I'm sure you would understand. It. When I started doing the thing that I'm doing, there was about 50 of us that was going to deal with this, and we was going to keep it black. I could name any number of people, but I can name some that you might know about, and that is, uh, well, Dick Gregory had a resort. He had a resort. He brought the wrong people in. The resort is still going on today. Famous Amos had his cookies. His cookies is going strong out there today. He has nothing to do with it. If he bakes a cookie, he goes to jail because he let the wrong people in. And it can keep going on and on, you know. I mean, all those people, you know, that I was there with, you know, and they just said, you know, if you want to make it big and you want to get the money real fast, you got to let them in. And I said, I'll take my time and do it my way. <laughs> so that's the rule. You know, they, it's called an unwritten rule. <laughs> and until laws are passed to protect that, then this is what happens. 
You've heard of uh, Allensworth, Rosewood, Sun City. I mean, I could keep on doing I could even say the whole state of Oklahoma. You know, I mean, we can go. And even not too far in the distance, uh, there was a guy named Roebuck. Yes. Maybe in this part of the country, you might see the word Roebuck, but in the part of the country I'm from, that name doesn't exist. Man starts a company, he keeps that company for 15 years, and after 15 years, they decide, you know, you're black, you can't get no license. He takes on a partner that can get the license for him, and then he loses. You know, it's, it's a rule. You know, we just don't know about it. But we find out about it when we make that mistake. But when those rules are changed, then anything else can be changed. But uh, that's what, and that happens, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis of people that you don't even know about. And it's just that the, I mean, even at one point, the Malcolm X School in, the, I think, in New York or someplace was threatened to be shut down simply because there were no white people there. If some of you might know something, you know, about that. And it goes on, you know, across the country. And in California, you know, it is really bad there, you know, because a holistic practitioner can't even be licensed at all. You know, I've been through, you know, my situations. I don't normally talk about it, but uh, I got off the plane in Houston International, Continental International in uh, uh, Houston, Houston, Texas. I had no luggage. I knew my luggage was there because I always wait and get off the plane, you know, I just sit there until people, you know, get off because I kind of like that space. I didn't see no luggage. When the next thing you know, I looked at my luggage and it was sitting in the middle of the floor. Everybody was gone. When I picked up my luggage, I had 15 guns in my head. I think that was the day I learned to pray. But and all of it was about this. That's what it was about. But that's been a little while ago, and I'm still here. I've had to go six years through court, where we went to court every month. I had four judges presiding. There was no jury, just, you know, lawyers for the state of California on one side, and I was defending myself on the other side because the judge says that the 12 counts that was brought against me, if I lose any one of those counts, I go to jail and my lawyer defends me from the jail cell. Well, to this day, for any reason or no reason, I've never been to jail. Don't even, don't intend to ever go. Because, see, there's some things that actually can happen to the body, you know, when you do it right. <coughs> In other words, make sure that those lobes in your colon is open. And then when that happens, anything that comes up against you, you're already prepared. You start closing it up, they find out what they can attack on you, then they will actually do it. They will attack it. The, um, and, you know, after the six years, I won my case. And won the case with a note saying, you know, I was called in for a hearing. It had nothing to do with the case. They had all these college professors there. And they said, if you can take, you know, we need to take what you know and get it into the public schools for credit of the colleges. And stupidly, I said, I think it's a great idea. What do you want me to do to start? They said, that's not what we had in mind. They wanted me to teach the professors. And they could do it because they're better educated than I am. <laughs> you know, I mean, I feel like if I'm, if I'm qualified to educate the educators, I don't see no problem, you know, with the other part. But it's just that at that point, you know, I wasn't so stupid and I just decided to not 
continue to act stupid. And I said, you know, I think it's a great idea. Let me think about it. So I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> the, uh, because like everything else, take it and mess it up. You know, if any of you in here have been into a hospital and you've gotten the treatments that you've gotten in that particular hospital, you know that they don't know what they don't. Just as simple as that. And at the same time, they are treating your body on a basis of where they can only cover 33 and a third degree of what's there. I mean, if you was born with 360 degrees, why you want 33 and a third? Now, you know, I'm not talking about any of you here that might be Masons and Eastern Stars and all that other stuff. You know. that's, that's the thing, you know, that basically you have to deal with and let that 33 and a third degrees that you have make you smart enough to seek out some help to get the rest of what you own. Um, okay. the, uh, so basically, this would be the eye and this points to each part of the body all the way throughout the body. And it takes care of everything that is in the body, you know, from the head to the toe. And whenever something breaks down, it will show up in the eye. And then there is methods and means that you can do to get rid of it. And last night I mentioned about some of the people, you know, with glasses on, you know, and, and it's kind of funny. Today, there's not that many glasses in the room. Because I think you must have took them off. <laughs> in your personal place. Uh, but you don't need those glasses, you know, because if the doctor told you that he was giving you those glasses so it would make your eyes better and you went back later and got a heavier prescription, then he lied to you. So you need to seek out another means to find out, you know, how really to make your eyesight better. And and it can be done. It just could be just a little simple thing that you're doing to your body that you need to get rid of, or it may be something that you need to take to enhance that part of the body, or it could be a load that is in the body that needs to be cleaned out so the food value that you're eating that is wholesome can get to the body and rid you of that situation. And for those of you, you know, that are wearing, wearing glasses, have you noticed that when you go to the bathroom and have a bowel movement, that your eyes clear up a little bit? Yep. Check it out. <laughs> yeah, so that should tell you something there, is that just a simple bowel movement increases your eyesight. Mm -hmm. So it should tell you, you know, that, well, like Dr. Africa puts it, you know, it should tell you you're full of shit. <laughs> uh, Why do they have people take the tonsils out? You find a lot of children have tonsils taken out. Yeah, usually what happens is, is that uh, the tonsils may get inflamed, you know, because of radiation. And uh, see, a lot of times, you know, we don't have time as a whole. Keep in mind, when I say we, I'm talking about as a whole. <laughs> okay. Uh, to actually prepare the meals or whatever is being done, you know, and it's, it's going to be done, you know, in the school and all that. Microwave ovens are used very, very heavy. You know, they use them in the school for the school lunch program. They also, you know, people also use them at home. Well, the microwave oven, you know, puts off radiation. And that radiation goes in, you know, and it messes up the tonsils, the thyroid, and, and, and all this in the body. And they get inflamed and they need to come out. That's really, you know, what happens. At the same time, the consumption of dairy products, you know, such as milk, ice cream, cheese, and all that, it also messes up the tonsil. And this is one of the reasons that they have to come out. Now, anything that's going to mess up any part of the body whatsoever has zero nutritional value. That's what they give the kids. I know most of the children, when, when I was coming up, uh, they're, all, they're from, from one to six years old, 
get their tonsils out. They always have something wrong with their throat. But I noticed that when they were in the hospital, as soon as they have them, they ask them what do they want after they have their tonsils out. And then they give them ice cream, something cold, and they give them soda, and, they, and, and, and the kids just love it. And they rather have the ice cream than food. And now you find grown people uh, around in my neighborhood, as soon as the ice cream truck comes, that's the first thing the kids get in the hat and eating all day, but they'll eat that ice cream. So I just was wondering, what can you give them in place of it that's cold? <laughs> you know, you can, you can actually take a number of things, you know, and, and uh, replace all of that. If you took bananas, frozen, you know, you could make ice cream with it. You can make popsicles. I mean, you can do a whole lot of things with just a ripe banana. And if you needed to, you know, you could load it up with uh, nuts, uh, strawberries, cherries, you know, to give it the different flavors, you know, that it needs. And, and that's it. You can even take a banana, you know, and blend it real good and put a little drop of lemon in it and you got sugar. So, you know, it's, and it's not going to be one of those things where they're going to say, you know, I don't like this, I need some ice cream. Because if you don't teach them the drug, they're not going to know the drug. And because we even get addicted on certain things, you know, is that when is the last time that you actually had a vegetable plate and could be blindfolded and tell everything that you was eating? See, a carrot is supposed to taste like a carrot. A piece of celery, like a piece of celery. But by the time we get through with it, you don't know what it tastes like. You got to see it to know what you're eating. You, know, you close your eyes and you eat it and you don't know anything. It's because that's not what we're really addicted to, or, or eating. We're actually eating something totally different. I was wondering if you uh, knew of any herbs or treatments that could uh, help an individual who has uh, lupus, arthritis lupus. Yeah, actually the, the lupus situation is nothing but arthritis. That's really what it is. It's just that it's arthritis in the blood. And basically the same feelings, you know, you're, you're going to get from one as you're going to get from the other one, uh, even though they work a little bit different on the body. But uh, I do have a formula, you know, that is called ART that works on that. But at the same time, alfalfa uh, can actually supply the body, you know, with that that it needs to put that lubrication in the joints and at the same time uh, clean up the blood to to take out that uh, poison that is there that is causing the body to ache and go through the changes that it goes through. Yeah, there's some literature on that. Documentation on it. Yeah, I see you in the documentation. Yeah, I got the... Uh, there's a book called Forever Young. I forgot who put the book out. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so everything's described in the book? Yeah, it's described. It's described. Uh, and the other one is Rebirth of Gods. There's things in there, you know. The, the two books, what happens with the two books is that one of them is dealing with the common sense factor, you know, why we do certain things that we do mm -hmm. and, and uh, the meaning that it has. In addition to that, with what you should be doing to clear up the problems itself. The other one deals with the problems itself of what's there and what to do. Thank you very much. Um, in the book, is there a, a method or a process to begin to use to um, use the herbs or the formulas that you have? Is there a formula to begin to unblock the loads or, I mean, to begin to get on a diet plan? Yes, it, it, it's a... Uh, there is a third book, um, one called The Natural Way. Uh, we'll get by. Okay, yeah. And, uh, oh, wait a minute. What are you talking about? The, um, yeah. Just 
do you recommend the process, sure. like maybe it's 21 day beginning process? You know, I know this is a lifetime kind of thing. Yeah, I, I have a process which we call a seven day cleanse. Okay. And that particular process, you know, will actually clean out those bones. Okay. All right, good. The, um, And then, you know, the iridology situation itself, it will tell you basically what it's there. It's the same thing. If you've ever had anything like an acupuncture done on you or, I mean, acupressure done on you, uh, where the person, you know, actually, you know, pushes into the foot, they feel basically what is going on in here. But at the same time, you also feel what's there because they can push on your foot, you know, on your shoulder. And, uh, you know, that's the way of knowing, you know, that something is blocked through there because that pain would have never came up or it only came up when they touched the wrong nerve. Are you doing sessions today? Are you doing... Okay. Um, I'm glad you're speaking about the pain. Um, I didn't know any better, but when she was an infant, she had a spinal tap. And since then... Um, had chronic ear infections. Um, her bowel movements aren't regular. Um, it's always backed up or something. They're always going to do something for her. Every time I go to the health food store, it's like they're not trying to, they really don't know her condition or they don't really evaluate her condition. They just say, well, use this and use this. Um, I, I was wondering if you can give her a consultation to see, you know, to see what's wrong, right? To see her eyes and see what's wrong on the front or the <coughs> I think the reason, you know, actually, I don't, I don't have cavities. Never have had any, um, because in my upbringing, there were certain rules and regulations that had to be, you know, done in my family. And at the same time, with the herbalist that was in the community, you know, which was, you know, my teachers. Uh, most of us. You know, they would especially would do what they would tell us to do. Never had any cavities. And uh, not even the, you know, like, you don't get a cavity, but you get that dark stuff, you know, in the bite and all that. You know, we didn't even get that stuff, you know. So I don't have any of that dark stuff down in there, you know. It's just, you know, good teeth. And uh, the, the diet definitely has a lot to do with it. Uh, I never drank anything but spring water. And all I have to do, usually I can smell the water and know whether or not it's spring or not. Because if you get any kind of a chemical or Clorox smell, you know it's, it's not. So you leave it alone. Uh, Fortunately, you know, even now that I don't even have to buy water. Sometimes I buy water, you know, when I'm on a trip. But, uh, since I have water on both ranches, I just load up my bottles and <laughs> and just continue to keep them loaded up. You know, uh, at least I know what how, how long it's going to be before I get back to one of the places, and I get enough water to last me till I get back. And this is basically the way that I do it. Uh, I don't use toothpaste. You know, there's toothpaste costs too much money. <laughs> there's an easier way of doing it, you know, there's a lot of toothpaste, I think, that, uh, well, this must be back in the bag now, but anyhow, for some of you remember that the, the fruit thing that was sitting over there, that's great toothpaste, you know, some of the best toothpaste you can get. If you take the foods and you break them down, you know that uh, you find pepsin, and which is an enzyme, you know, that breaks things down, and you find it in fruit. And an apple is a good example. You take the piece of fruit, you put it in your mouth, and you chew it, and just leave it there. It cleans your teeth. You don't even need the toothbrush. That costs money, too. The, the, uh, 
uh, and this, that's what you do. You just chew on it. It's almost like the chew stick. Uh, you know, how you can use it to brush your teeth with too. It's a simple, simple thing like that. But you can take the any piece of fruit, basically. You know, I prefer the apple, you know, because sometimes, you know, you can just bite into the apple and just, just hold it there. And, uh, and it'll clean. It'll clean the plaque and all this stuff off your teeth. And, you know, many other things to do. And if you got to brush your teeth, just use water. That's enough. You don't need that now. Okay. Oh. I have a question about the minister who's not doing the natural path. I was using that as unhealthy. I needed to go to the next slide. Yeah, well, let's see. Not necessarily unhealthy, but not necessary. Not necessary. Right. The, uh, because, because the way we do our bodies, it is definitely uh, healthy to go through that process. But it's unnecessary based on the things that we actually do to our bodies. Most of the time when somebody comes to me, you know, and they're planning, you know, uh, to have children, I usually try to get them to wait at least, you know, 24 months you know, put it on a 24-month cycle and make sure that uh, during that time that their diet and everything, you know, is, is right. And, uh, you know, it doesn't stop any activities or anything that they're doing, but it's just that before having the child, at least clean the body out, you know, for like at least 24 months. And the reason for it is, is that the normal, now this is the normal, I'm talking about, you know, people of color at this point, the normal span for childbirth is 12 months. The prenatal care situation makes sure that it is going to be either uh, nine months or less. And if something happens and the, and the uh, baby is not born in nine months, then the doctor wants to induce labor. That baby is not going anywhere. There's only one way for that baby to do it, and that's come out. So there's no need to try and induce no labor, you know, because something being overdue. If something's overdue, what are you going to do? Send it back? <laughs> yeah. Now, it's just, it's just that there's a reason, you know, for the prenatal. And there's a reason, you know, to make sure that the baby is born, you know, in nine months. Because if it does, if it is, then that means that the lobes in the colon, the things that's going to give you all the lifespan that you need, you know, from the heart of the body, which is, you know, here. Uh, won't be fully developed, even though they'll be developed. They won't be fully developed, and then that gives enough room for you to be dictated to and actually make a difference. Now, they got a thing out there, you know, that is talking about the, uh, well, the swing tension deficit disorder. I think that's what it is. You know, in other words, they can't do anything with the child. You know, that whole problem can be solved not with a retinal, but with a computer. Give the child a computer, you know, something, you know, that's, that there's a challenge. Now, when I went to school and they told me that Columbus discovered America, I said, okay, and I wrote it down. I believed it. They look at it and they say, wait a minute, this man was waving, I mean, there was thousands of people on the shore waving at him and he said look what I discovered <laughs> you know they they said that's a bunch of bull you know so they don't go for that so it's boring to them in the classroom so they really do something else there's nothing wrong with them and then the, the other thing is is that because of the high cost of uh, uh, the hospital a lot of these babies are being you know, they're coming into the world after the nine months is over, and you can't do nothing with them. You know, when I uh, when I was going to school, there was anyhow, there's uh, nine of us. My parents went to the school and let them know. You know, that was when you know if you did something wrong. You know, you got to whip them right there in school, and if anything else happened, you know, you had to deal with it another another way. 
But uh, it was no such thing, you know, you couldn't punish the, ch the child. But my parents, you know, would make it, you know, point blank every year that I was never to be punished, you know, for any reason whatsoever. Uh, but to notify them, and then they, you know, would punish me. But all the rest of them, you know, all the rest of my sisters and brothers, you know, I mean, they got tore up, you know, at school. But I didn't get that. Sometimes I wish I had a guy at school because when I got it at home, it was a whole lot worse than, <laughs> worse than what they did at school. And the reason was is because I was an analyst. I analyzed everything, you know, probably from that thing. I mean, I had a word that I always used to say, why? And I find out that when I use the word why, nobody can answer the question. So I know something must be wrong, and then I would retaliate you know, to that point. And in school, you know, you got to be punished for that. But the 12-month baby is the very thing that is not supposed to happen in this particular country. And anything that you can do to cause that to come about, you know, if you're planning childhood, then that's basically what should happen. You live in a cycle that deals with 12 months. Everything that produces in a 12-month cycle comes about at the same time. If you're looking at apples on a tree, that apple tree produces those apples at the same time every month. Those birds or ducks or whatever it is is going to make that cycle that it makes at the same time every year. The fish, the salmons, do their spawning upstream at the same time. The dolphins the oil, everything you can think of does it at the same time. And in every case, it comes to the, to the day of 12 months that it's happening. And when you have a birthday, that birthday comes 12 months. But is it really your birthday? If you were nine months, then nine months from that day is your birthday. If that's the way it is, but that's not the way, you know, that our cycle is running. So something has to be done to actually make up for those three months that is missing or whatever number of months is missing. You know, whether it be one month, two months, or even four months. You know, whether you're a seven-month baby or eleven-month baby or whatever. That has to be made up for that particular time. The, uh, and I've even got a set of formulas to make up for that deficiencies that you have in those 12 months. I disguise every one of them by giving them a name, you know, like uh, Pisces, Aquarius, Leo, and whatever. And these particular minerals, you know, that you would normally be missing is, you know, in that particular formula. And, you know, it, it actually could keep you from getting sick during the year when you have these certain kind of ailments that you have and it could dissolve that. I, I don't even know what I answered your question. Phone? Phone? The herbs that... Yeah, see, here's what happened. Here's what happened. Whenever you enter anything into the body, you know that the body can understand. If it has anything to do with the reproductive area, then it's going to lodge itself there. That is actually debris, toxins, or whatever you want to call it, that is in the system that has to come out. So all this stuff builds up along, you know, with the eggs and whatever, you know, that. Uh, that, should have been, that has to be discarded from the body. And it forms itself in the way of, of blood. And then it has to be discarded from the body uh, monthly to keep from getting cancer. Because anything that sticks around too long is gonna start decaying and, and it's gonna spread. And that's basically, you know, because the foods that we eat causes that particular problem. 
men go through the same problem. The only difference is men eliminate on a day-to-day -day basis. But that can also get overloaded, and this is, this is where the prostate cancer, you know, comes in there. And, uh, and, and the herbs actually you would use for that, uh, if the, well, Damiana would be really the herb to use for it. Finally, answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. What about people ha putting dentures in your mouth? I had dentures in my mouth, partials, for over 12 years, and then I, I used to take them out every night. But then this one night I couldn't get them out, and I kept, and it was in there about a whole week, and I couldn't pull them down. And then finally I got them down, and my mouth was so sore up under there, and it had swelled over that metal. And, I, it, and then I said to myself, I, when I started to get something to eat, my mouth was so sore, it took me a whole week to kind of heal my mouth out. And then I found that after I took that metal out of my mouth, I wasn't tasting food for 12 years because that metal and, and you put food in there and on your tongue, you, you get a little taste of it, but that metal the root of your mouth, it takes a lot of taste out of your mouth too. And, and next thing you know, uh, you I was like, when I had the, the false teeth in my mouth, I, always want something to chew on, always want something to eat. And uh, people say, you, you get heavy, you get fat. I say, you get fat because you don't have nothing to tell you that you had enough to eat. And you just, because of that metal that's been in your mouth, now I haven't had that metal in my mouth now two years, and I don't, I don't get that I want to eat. I have to eat, eat, and want something to eat all the time. And my mouth is, is getting a lot better, and, and I taste food better. And, and if I drink something, if the liquid goes down much easier. And uh, I can't take pills because I, all them years I had that melon, I, didn't, I kept saying, how come I can't swallow a pill? So I don't like pills today because I used to gag, used to get stuck up in there. And I say it came from that melon sitting in the back of my mouth. And so now, um, if I want to take something, I, got, I like to take a lot of uh, liquid stuff. So I just want to know, is, was it bad for 12 years that I had that metal in my mouth every day? Did it take something away from my, uh, my purities and things that were in my mouth? Because my gums were swelling and, uh, you know, then sometimes you want to sleep and your mouth is, you, you know, your mouth gets crooked because you have this metal in sitting in your mouth. So I just want to know from you, is it, is it good to put stuff, false teeth in your mouth? If you should, you know, I mean, I'm not talking just for me, but it did a lot to my yeah. mouth, I'll put it that much. Wait. Yeah, I, I think you answered all those questions. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, I, I wouldn't even want to bother that because I, did, I might mess it up. <laughs> no, you... I think what you did, you know, was the right thing to do, and your body itself is telling you that that was the right thing to do, mm -hmm. and and it definitely was not good for you. Mm -hmm. Can immunization process be um, reversed in children? Um, this is my understanding. Yeah, it can be. You know, one of the things to get rid of the the these inoculations that they're doing is really the sunlight. You know as much sun as you can get. You know, you're people of the sun, you need that sun. It's just like right now at this particular point in time we're having the meeting here. Uh, if we were having this meeting in, a, in an open field outside, the, even the way your body would respond would be different. But having it inside, you know, it's just that this is a modern day cave. But we're used to it. This is the way you know we can get the most people you know to actually listen to what needs to be done. You can always go out into the sun and all that. You know, sometimes we don't do it. But uh, outside is the, one of the things in Arizona. I mean, we have all this place, you know, set up, you know, for people, you know, to sit there and eat. And we've made it, you know, as comfortable as possible. 
I mean, you know, even if you wanted to sit at the table, you can sit at the table. You don't want to sit at the table and want to sit on the couch and eat, you can do that. On the floor and eat, however it is. But we find that the people, most of the people, take their plate and go outside because there's something about the sun and the elements of the air, especially when it's clean, that, you know, just tells us that this is actually what we should do. Yeah, uh, four, we call it 4PG, and the other one is FEY. At the same time, the diet needs to be changed because usually the sickle cell situation is really the consumption of sugar. It's really nothing wrong with sickle cell. Well, it's nothing wrong with the cells. It's just that uh, they become sickle when they're punished with a drug. And usually that drug is sugar. And and then this is what causes the flare ups. She should stay with the sugar. Excuse me, brother, can I get a picture with you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> at the end, because we were trying to find you. At the end. Oh, my at the end. Oh, sorry, I'm doing the intermission. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have a question about asthma Tim. because it's um, so uh, prevalent right now among uh, young kids, asthma. Mm -hmm. Are there natural herbs that you could take for that? Yeah, usually comfort and fenugreek, you know, will take care of the asthma situation right away. Why is it spreading so much? Because that's the diet. The diet is a dairy, is a milk diet. You know, visit somebody in the hospital and watch them bring the plate around. Mm -hmm. Almost everything on there is dairy. You know, and that, that's all that they, they push. To have strong bones and teeth, you need dairy. That's what they say. But the strong dairy actually gives you cavity. It makes your bones weak. Yeah, that's any dairy product. Yeah, it will destroy your bones and destroy your teeth. Who would you get the source of calcium from? Carrots or things like that? Well, let's, let's look at, yeah. See, that's a very easy thing to look at, you know, because, see, there is no calcium really in milk. It's just like there ain't no protein in meat. In meat. Because if you looked at it this way, is that you got to eat meat, you got to drink milk, get calcium and protein. But you know cows don't eat meat and cows don't drink milk. So where they get it? So they got it from some place. You know, so when they was eating, you know, the vegetation, the grains and all that, that's how they got the calcium. And that's the same way, you know, you get the calcium. You know, I think the last time that I had some dairy products, I was probably about twelve years old. Never had a broken bone. Hmm? Never had a broken bone. Never had a broken bone. I, I lost a finger but, you know, <laughs> and got his back, but uh, but that's as close as, as close as I've had. I mean, even the in playing football and all that basketball, taking all those beatings, <laughs> still hadn't had no broken bone. What is this sugar substitute? A sugar substitute? I see. Uh, What's, what's your husband's name? That's your sugar. All your fruits and uh, all your fruits are sweet. And that's all the sugar you need. Yeah, if you can't get it from a fruit, you know, you don't need it. Mm. Does honey fall in Honey? I don't know. You can get home. You can walk through the door and call her honey, too, if you want to. <laughs> 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 and the honey, honey is something that you definitely really wouldn't want to deal with, only because 
if you can go and get the honey yourself, then that's a different situation. But if it's going to be sold in the, the uh, on the market, it's, it's something wrong with it. What is your view on chemotherapy, especially the oral chemo? What is? You know, when people take uh, chemotherapy to the mouth, you know, like, yeah. the vein or drinking even the doctor gives yeah. you chemo pills. Or yeah, it's things. it's basically the same as radiation, and anything that is radiation is going to it's going to deteriorate the body. In other words, chemotherapy. You tell somebody not to take it. You know, the doctor say, well, you know, it's down a lump. You know, you have to take it for the next six months or whatever. You know, to tell them not to, they would. I recommend them not doing it because even if you talk to the doctor and the doctor tells you, you know, to take that, you know, he'll say it will prolong your life and maybe another month. You know, so if it's only going to do deal with it on on a month basis, then you might as well not do it at all and take another alternative so you can be around here for a few more years. You know, this is the kind of thing. It has, and another thing too, it is one of those things that actually will kill, I mean completely kill, the melanin so you, content you know, they take, in they your take, body. They take those, um, the veins, you know, the lip nodes out. You, you know, you take the lip nodes out, you know, just for protection, you agree with them, you know, with that sort of, like, you know, you might, have, like, um, I know a woman that has uh, hands that are probably bigger than a head. And uh, so they took that out, and they took the lymph nodes out, and they told her for six months or a year or whatever, she had to take the oral chemo. And, you know, and, and, I was, and to me, I, I was wondering, I always wanted to know whether it was going to take the oral chemo or not. And, and then taking all the Morgan out of her, you know, it, to me it was pretty small, too, what they saw. You know? And she's older. Oh, you know? yeah. Okay. Okay, I want to thank everybody, you know, for not throwing any rocks and bricks at me. <laughs> and I hope I might have said something, you know, that, you know, might be a benefit to that too.